It's a show where we talk about the power of your mind to change your world around you, to literally affect the fabric of your reality. We talk about this feeling of hope and joy and relief. And that is what being aware of your flow does. It gives you a feeling of power again in your lives. You hit, oh my God, you are so on target. You are so amazing. I can't, I can't thank you enough. It is the feeling that you bring forward. It is your emotional connection that really sets the tone for what is going to be happening to you and for you. And you know that feeling when you touch it. It just spreads through you. Thank you for taking my call. I don't know why I feel like crying. <laughs> I think oh. I just feel your love. <laughs> oh, of course. And I think I'm going to get some answers. I'm Summer McStravick, and welcome to another episode of Flow Dreaming. Hello, Flow Dreamers. It's Summer. I'm so excited about today's show. I have a list of notes that I know that it's going to be impossible for me to get through, but I'm going to try my best. I'm going to make it happen. And you're going to notice that making and make is the word of the day. Um, When I teach people how to manifest and create Many of you who've been listening to me for a while know that I talk about flow dreaming as the method that I have chosen to work with in my life almost exclusively. I do other things, of course, keep things fresh, but flow dreaming for me is just a consistent uh, winning way to make and create things to manifest for myself. And as a result, it's become sort of my life's journey um, to teach other people how to do this. I was, um, fortunate to be at a conference last week. And, you know, when you're at conferences, everybody says, what do you do? <laughs> you know what? My elevator pitch, I make stuff. I make stuff. I mean, I could boil it down into three words. I make life. I make my life. I make other people's lives or help them, uh, make or remake their lives. And then I happen to use certain techniques, methods, ideas, philosophies, actions to do it. That's what it boils down to. Now, a person who is fascinated by manifesting and wanting to create is a person who inherently wants to make things in their life. They are tired of always being behind the ball and just allowing things to tumble in already made or created by other people. It means you're at a place inside yourself where you're ready to step up and take your power. Take your power. For me, it's been really fascinating the last couple of years because I've been noticing more and more how the work I do with people, um, particularly the one-on-one work I do, say in my mentorship programs, focuses less and less on how to just make something. And more and more on where have you given your power away over the years that has disallowed you to make something there? Because if you're giving it to someone else, they're the ones doing the creating, not you. It's one thing to learn how to do something. It is a whole other world to learn where you've given up your ability to make, where you're waiting, where you're wanting where you can't seem to get past a decision or an idea, where you need more information, all of these ways of giving up our power. Now, fortunately, flow dreaming not only allows you to take your power back, but allows you to feel a complete sense of ease and trust and constant right decision making as you do it. In fact, I'll be doing a whole podcast on how to always make the right decision decision without fear. That's coming up a couple more weeks. Today, what I want to talk about is what flow looks and feels like. Now, this might seem like a really simple topic, and I thought so too when I was first putting it down, and then I realized, oh my gosh, I could go on for two hours about this. I mean, easily, easily. What flow looks and feels like. I've done shows on what flow energy is, I've done shows certainly on how to flow dream, but how do other people experience flow? How, how do people experience it differently from one another as they get into this process of creating and making using universal energy? I am going to share all kinds of ways 
that I have had people uh, tell me they work with flow that I have seen when I've looked into their minds, how I've seen them interacting with this energy. And that is your hour ahead. Before we go on, uh, this beautiful little podcast here that I get to do with you every week, which I do record live on Tuesdays, you can go to my website to find more about it. Uh, go to flowdreaming.com, F-L-O-W, flow, like you're flowing, not like slow, like you're slowing, you're flowing, like you're flowing in the clouds. Anyway, go to flowdreaming.com. You'll find a radio page there, a podcast page, where you can look up all kinds of information about the show. You can also find a place for, if you're new, to discover exactly how to use this technique. And I give you recommendations, where to begin, what resources that you want to get for yourself. Some of them are free. Some of them are very uh, inexpensive. Some of them are um, uh, more costly but they get you in much deeper and faster and you learn it quicker and are able to make big changes in your life. So it's totally up to you, but um, please go check out flowdreaming.com because that is what makes the podcast totally free to you. Everybody who goes and discovers the manifesting store and the rest of my work that is embodied there. Okay, so let's get into this idea of what flow looks and feels like. Now, briefly, when I am manifesting a big... A uh, core part of it for me is that I enter what I call a state of flow. And you've probably heard about this before because positive psychology talks about it. Flow psychology talks about it. Um, I'm hearing more and more teachers, uh, spiritual new age teachers, new age. Isn't that such an old fashioned word? I don't know how that even popped out. Mind, body, spirit, new thinking, um, talking about the flow state. I have been teaching this for a good 10 years or more, 10, 12, 15 years, I don't know, a long time. So I've had a lot of experience with what it feels like and what you'll discover in it. And particularly good for you is what you can do in it. I'd like you to think right now what it means to make things, to be a manifester. Switch gears just a second here. Just do this little experiment with me. Think about the things that you create. We make relationships. We make decisions. We make up our mind. We make connections. We make business deals. We make sales. We can make houses or cars or TVs or lampshades. We can make love. We spend our entire life making things, even when you feel that you're passively absorbing life, you're still making something. You've made a decision to watch TV. You are making up new information in your head that's coming in your eyeballs about whatever you're seeing. In other words, you can never be out of a state of creating. Never. Even sleeping. You're making new chemicals in your body. You're making room in your brain for storing all those, you know, memories and things that occurred during the day. You're making new cells. You're making things constantly. In fact, you can't do anything without an aspect of making or creating. So think for a second. Every moment that ticks past right now, tick, 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 tick is an experience. That experience has been made or created. So when you are starting to wake up or think about yourself as a co-creator, what you're acknowledging is, I am making every second of my existence in one way or another. How much direction do I want to give God, source, the universe, flow? And how much do I want to just let it happen without focus, without thought? Look around at the people who are really depressed in your life, who are negative, who have decided to just stop at some point in their growth and say, this is all I'm going to do now. They're still making things. All they've done is given up control. They've said, no, I'm, I give up. I give up. Just whatever happens, happens. And then they spiral into a place of negativity and a bleak feeling that life's just that way. It's never going to happen. Why are you even trying that? That's so stupid. You know, why don't you just stay home? Right. And they start to get into that 
spiral of thinking. And you know why? Because they're not making anything. That truly is their experience. When they're saying that to you, they're not just complaining. They're validating their experience. They're saying, yes, this is what I experience. Aren't you experiencing it too? And your answer is, no. <laughs> no, I'm not, actually. This is why you so often want to get away from those people. Because you're no longer in alignment with them. They're trying to hold still as they make something. So they're making the same thing over and over again. They're making it without thought, without direction, without internal guidance. You don't want to be aligned to that. I don't want to be aligned to that. That's why it feels icky to us. So what I'm getting at is you can't do anything without making it. So what do you do? How do you make things with direction? This is what flow is all about. Okay, flow, I've defined it a thousand different ways over the years. Look at it like this. It is your natural state of being, your natural direct direction, or your natural trajectory. This is not the same thing as predestination, as uh, what you are supposed to become or have happened for you. Uh, what's the word for that, you know, where you're, you're already set on a course and you can't get out of it? No, 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 no. As a conscious being, every moment you are making tweaks to this destination, you are like an arrow that has been shot from a bow. The direction is there, but you can be buffeted by the winds. You, as an arrow, have a conscious choice. You could actually shift direction. You could choose to sort of alter your course have new and different things come in. However, you're still being pushed. The energy of push is behind you. Maybe not so much direction, which is flexible, but the push is always there. It is the same push that is causing the universe to expand. It is the same push that makes time always flow in one direction. It is the same push that sends our earth spinning In the same direction for millennia after millennia. The push, the energy is behind you. That is flow. And your flow is constantly trying to position you in a place where you get the most benefit for the least amount of energy. Look at everything on our earth. Every plant is not spending a ton of energy to create its food. If it is, it's going to die out. Something better is going to replace it. Everything that surrounds us tries to get the biggest bang for its buck, you included. That means that a flow for you is pure ease. It is a place where you move forward and whatever you put into it, you get the most out of it. So flow is truly that sense of being outside of space and time. You forget where you are when you're in it. You forget how many hours have passed. The absorption is total and complete. Sometimes we can even forget that we are physical beings. If you've ever been in a flow in some sort of meditation, you forget how long you've been there. You're so present. You're so hooked in. You're so aligned. You may feel like you're still in your mind, but oh no, you're still making something every second. You're making some kind of alignment. You're making some kind of connection and you're staying with it for however long that meditation lasts for, but you're making it. You're flowing forward into it. You're creating it. Flow is naturally good. It is naturally aligned. It is naturally at ease, in ease. When resistance comes up, it is because you've somehow moved off the path of pure flow. And you know that. Think of it like this. When do things, when do hour, when do, when do minutes stretch into hours, right? When you're feeling the least aligned to a situation, when you are in fear or terror, when you are angry, when you, you know, when you're waiting for something, when you're not aligned, you're out of flow and resistance. And I've done many programs on that. That's not what we're getting into. I want to tell you what people feel. When they go in and flow dream. Okay, now you've got a basis for sort of what flow is and how you can get in it. When I teach flow dreaming, I say that there are three pillars to doing it effectively and right. One of them is this understanding or awareness of flow energy. The next is the component of daydreaming. And the third is the feeling or emotion that you're using to communicate 
with flow. So let's look at each one of these for a second here. The emotional connection is number one. Absolutely number one. That is your method of communicating. It is not visuals that communicate to flow. That's why when you do, you know, forms of creative visualization, sometimes you can feel like I just saw it in my mind. And is that all I have to do? I would say that's not half of what you have to do. That formulated it, that made it clear for you, perhaps brought other parts of you on board, your subconscious, etc. But what are you going to do with it now that you've seen it inside of your mind? Where are you going to put it? Are you going to cast it into your future? Are you going to cast it into your flow? Are you going to toss it in that flowing river of information? Or are you just going to hold it in your mind? That's what makes flow dreaming so potent. When you are in flow, I ask you to feel what it's like. Okay. Now, the reason you do this is because, and here's what you're doing. When you go into flow and you're just feeling what it's like, you're, again, you're making something. You're making a connection. You're making alignment. Now, some people um, stop with that and they just say, no, I just want to be aligned. I want to feel that sensation of what it's like to be aligned to something bigger than myself that's right and perfect and full of ease and grace and perfection and goodness. It helps me so much simply to align into that state because then every action I take afterwards comes from that place, is a mirror of that alignment that I created. And that's fine. I have many flow dreams in the manifesting store that simply take you to that place and align you there, like positive flow. I mean, that's a core flow dream for that purpose. Now, some people say, I start my flow dream with that, and then I move into what I want to program or create. I'm making something else. I'm going beyond just aligning and feeling that, and I'm feeling what I want to have next in my life. And now you're starting to work into your different emotions that you're communicating and creating within flow. Again, I know that's because it's already getting a little deep for some of you guys. That's another podcast, the language of emotion in flow. I want to just stick here with what does flow look like and what does flow feel like? Not what we do in it. Okay. Another show. So let's talk about visuals for a second here. Or actually, let's not talk about visuals. <laughs> we have a quick break to go to. And you'll notice I've kind of condensed uh, the amount of uh, ads in between these breaks to help you out, my lovely, loyal listeners. So it'll be a brief break. When we get back, I'm going to give you specific ways to see and feel what the inside of your flow might look like to you personally, specifically, your personal right way to see your flow. So stay with me for more coming up right after this. I'm Summer McStravick. A private session with Summer is unlike any other reading you've ever had. You can do it by phone or Skype from anywhere in the world. In your session, Summer reads your flow. Sometimes she sees things that are coming or things that have passed. Critically, she reads your present and can show you your current set of choices and help you know which ones flow best for you. Ask Summer any kind of questions. Ask her to look into people you care about, such as spouses, bosses, exes, family or friends, to see what they're really thinking. Ask her where your energy has gotten stuck or blocked. Because Summer is an expert at finding the core events, beliefs, or thoughts that block you. And together, the two of you can shake them loose. Last, ask Summer to craft a flow dream just for you, around your issues and desires. Ask her to put some strong manifesting energy in this area of your life. And as hundreds of past clients have said, be ready for real amazing results. It's not your typical reading. It's manifesting plus intuition. Find summer sessions on her website, flowdreaming.com, under private sessions. Even people who normally never get intuitive readings get readings from summer. That's flowdreaming.com. Search private sessions. 
Hi, I'm Summer, and my manifesting store at flowdreaming.com underwrites this free podcast. You're going to find so many tools there to help you practice flow dreaming, from individual targeted flow dreams to whole programs to on-demand classes to books and CDs. Of course, the Flow Dream of the Month Club, as well as my mentorship program. Oof, that is a lot. But there is where you can pick up something to practice with. The Manifesting Store puts your interest into motion. I know you won't stop there either, because once you get there, you'll also discover my free blog and our community discussion board, all about manifesting. That's The Manifesting Store at FlowDreaming.com. Bask in the glorious, soothing voice and music of Summer's Flow Dream Meditations. These meditations are unlike any other you'll find. They're active meditations. They're packed with energy, real power, and yet you can gently fall asleep listening to any one of them. Each flow dream meditation pours good emotions and energy into your subconscious as you sleep or meditate. You can choose from a variety of focuses, from dazzling self-love to overnight riches. Try a few and see for yourself. You can find all summer's Flow Dream meditations at flowdreaming.com in the Manifesting Store. You're listening to Flow Dreaming with your host, Summer McStravick. Welcome back to Flow Dreaming. Hey. I have more to go. I left you with a little teaser that I was going to give you different ways to figure out what flow would look like to you. Um, Okay. Let's see here. Let's start with, so I'm consulting my notes. I told you I had so many. Um, Here's some questions. When you are closing your eyes and moving into flow and you're starting to generate the emotional connection, the sensation, the feeling. Many of you have experienced my MP3s and you notice, huh, sometimes she tells me to look at this. Sometimes she tells me I'm I'm in a flowing river of light. Sometimes I'm under a universe of stars. Sometimes I'm a bird in the sky. Why does she keep changing it? How come she doesn't stay with the same one? Is there a purpose? Do do specific images work better for specific things I'm trying to create? My answer is, I do all kinds of things to get you into flow and to start getting you to see it and sense it, because I don't exactly know what your perfect, ideal, flowing place, quote unquote, looks like. So I give you a lot of different places to try out. Some are going to work better for you than others. So my question is, if you could pretend that you could see the inner working of the universe, What would it look like to you? Inner working of the universe. That could mean behind the scenes of physical reality, inside a matrix or a net of information that holds everything together. Feeling again that there is a flow to it. It is not stopped and frozen. It is moving because the universe, just like you, is creating every second. So whatever you see probably has an aspect of motion to it, right? What would you see? Here's another way of asking that question that might resonate with you more. If you pretended that you could be inside God's kitchen or workshop where everything is in a continuous act of creation, being born every moment, how would that appear to you? How would it appear to you. Okay? That's different than what would it look like? I don't want you to think what would it look like? That puts a lot of pressure on you. You're already saying, well, I have to get it right. No. How would you want it to appear to you? How would you want that place to make sense to you? What would you want to see? Some of you are thinking, well, I'd want to feel like I was in the kitchen of my mom's house where everything was possible when I was a kid. Some of you are thinking, I want to be laying under a blanket of stars, like, you know, warm velvet flowing over me, where 
source and me and everything was constantly making up new ideas infused with this kind of excitement, continuous excitement. I don't know. You have to answer that. Here's another way to ask that question. If you pretended that you were in a place made of pure, moving information or energy, and it could appear any way you wanted it to, how would it make the most sense for you to see it or be in it? How would it make the most sense? Okay, so now you're starting to see my thinking behind why I've created all these different scenarios in my MP3s and the flow dreams I've made for you. Because all of these different ways have made sense to me. To be in this place of motion, creation, information, and to be squarely in it, not on the outside looking in, but part of it, moving with it, aligned to it. Okay, this brings us to the next point. Once you're starting to get an idea of how it can look to you, let me answer, oh wait, let me answer one more question I commonly get. No, it does not have to look the same way every time. Probably won't. In fact, if it did, I would be surprised. Some people do create, you know, places, you know, there are particular places in my flow that I like to go to for certain purposes. I call one of them my heart room. Sometimes my clients encounter their heart room. And it's a place where my heart keeps emotions that need to be worked through or have been locked up. And I see it as a place of continuous creation. I know that if I'm keeping emotions and feelings locked up there, I am actively keeping them created all the time because I am a being in flow. And I can actively release them at any time. I like to uh, lay under the stars, like I've mentioned. Sometimes I feel like I'm in a matrix of swirling lights and colors, strands of energy. I feel like I can just walk through it and pull down the strands that make sense and then just weave them into some feeling that I'm looking for, some emotional outcome that I'm trying to create in my life. And by the way, this is advanced, but all your emotional outcomes are attached to things at some point because you are a physical being. So, you know, I work in reverse of a lot of people. I say, don't manifest things. How silly. If you manifest things, you're going to find yourself in that little hamster wheel of then trying to manifest the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And you're going to say, how come I keep manifesting things and they're not fulfilling me? And I'll say, because you're manifesting things. You're not manifesting emotional fulfillment. Manifest emotional fulfillment in this area and the right things that are attached to it will be dutifully chugging along with it. Okay. Let's think now about that sensation I've been talking a lot about, flow. Right? There's a feeling of movement in there, isn't it? Movement. If you are in an act of continuously creating and being recreated, and if things are funneling into your life, I often use the uh, metaphor or analogy that we are like a river. Don't be confused with water, okay? (laughs) No fear of water coming into this discussion. You are a river of energy, okay? Everything around you is also a river of energy or a stream, whatever you want to look at it like. Okay? Even the, even the podcast you're listening to. I mean, clearly it is a physical stream of audio information that is hitting your eardrums one second after the next. However, the computer or the phone or the car, whatever you're listening to this on, is also a stream of information. It looks solid, but it's a flow. Because this thing, this object, had a past when it was a metal and it was mined from the earth and perhaps it was hauled someplace and then brought to a factory and melted down and then made and molded into parts and pieces and now it's performing this. Think about this grand ancient history the very thing in front of you has had. It's been recycled a million times from other things. I'm looking at some beautiful orchids in front of me right now. They're manifesting for this stream or this flow of their lifespan as an orchid. But probably in about a year, they'll go back into the ground and they'll be taken up and they'll become something else. That energy never disappears, never goes away. It just changes shape continuously. It evolves. It takes in more information. Those molecules that were this orchid today, 
may become molecules in a tree tomorrow that may be carved and made into a necklace that I'll wear against my skin in 15 years' time. Those molecules are continually absorbing, taking in information through multiple acts of creation in their flow. Right? Pretty deep stuff, but this is fundamental because this is how the universe works. This is how if you want to navigate your life at the absolute top level, you've got to get it. You've got to start doing it. Become part of it. So there's motion in everything is what I'm getting at. When my flow interacts with your flow, we're like two streams that come together. We are exchanging energy and information, having a mutual experience. Some people call it co-creating. I'm co-creating with all of you right now through this education, the podcast. I'll be co-creating with some of you through mentorship, through MP3s. You'll be co-creating with other people through your line of work, whatever that is. Maybe you're a teacher. Maybe you're a judge. Maybe you're um, a mom, you're co-creating, you're interacting with these other streams of energy. Some people don't stay very long in our life at all. They're only there for a few seconds while we pass them on the road, but they were there. And there was a lot of potential in that moment we crossed paths. Anything could have happened. I could have flirted with somebody in the other car, could have hit that person in the other car, could have noticed them talking on their phone and had a thought about it that then created something in my reality. You get it? Like life is just so continuous. There's so much opportunity. That's why when people say, I don't know what decisions to make, I say, how can you be stuck in a decision? There are a a million decisions a second that you could be partaking in. You don't have the luxury of sitting back and waiting for the right one because, you know, by that time, five billion will have passed you by. Your flow is guiding you, though. Your emotion is guiding you. That's what helps you make the decisions every moment, every second of your day. Okay, let's get into more about motion here. Okay, you have these flows of energy, right? Already you're starting to feel like, yeah, I can see these streams coming together. You know, my house and I, that's a stream of energy. I'm part of it. I've been part of my house for 12 years now. I've given a lot to this house. This house has given a lot to me. You ever wonder why places stay with you while you dream about them years later? And yes, psychologists have a lot to say because they imprint on you. There are certain emotional things that occur there. But the very house has a flow of energy that's imprinting on you, not just the relationships or the stuff that happened in it. The very place does. That's why often you go to different places in your mind consistently in your dreams to work out different energies, different thoughts, different feelings, because those places have impacted you energetically. You co-shared a stream with them. You know, there are three places that I go to regularly, places from my past that I visit for various purposes while I sleep. And I realize, well, because I have a stream connecting me to them still, I'm no longer there, but I'm still there connected to them in my flow. So here we are. You're in your flow. How can you really get aligned to it? You understand that there's, that there's motion in it. You've, you've asked yourself, what would this place look like or feel like? What does it feel best to me as, right? Some people have said, well, I picture myself in God's hands and God is always flowing. Therefore, I'm completely protected and I'm in total right alignment and I'm in goodness and grace when I go there. Whatever I ask for is heard and delivered. I'm in a place of utterly no resistance, right? So you you can come up with any visual image you want. There is no right place to see. And that place will probably change either day by day or depending on what you're asking for or what your needs are for that moment. All these places, though, should have one thing in common, all the visuals. And it's this movement, motion, and understanding that a flow is not frozen. It's moving. So here are some things that people have told me they have felt or seen, it's a combination of feeling. They're all feeling-based images um, that they have most commonly seen or felt over the years. And I'll share them with you. Maybe you'll want to try one or two of them if you haven't already. Um, imagine that you're on a roller coaster and you are locked in tight. Your wheels are on the track. And it's not a scary track. It's smooth. It's smooth. And you feel really safe. You know it's metal on metal. It's clamped underneath. There is no way you're ever going to fly off that track. It is clamped on. There's metal that goes all the way around those rails. 
and it is smooth. It is so smooth, it glides. You feel like there's not even metal touching metal. It's like you're gliding a, an inch above it, just streaking along. Absolute faith, absolute movement, energy. Here's another one. You're in a flowing stream, right? This is a common one, one I repeat over and over again. Now, you don't have to feel you're swimming. If you don't like to swim, don't swim. If you love to swim, be a dolphin. Be a natural in this place. Put yourself in whatever form you want. Be a fish. If you want, you can float on a little pool thingy, you know, with a little with a little cup of something to drink on the side. If you want, you can be on a catamaran. Or you can just be floating along the surface. You can become a leaf. Just being moved. Just being moved. How about this one? Maybe you're not so good at images. Maybe you're more tactile, meaning you like to touch things. That makes the most sense to you. What about an energy that comes up from behind you and gently nudges you forward and you feel it surrounding your skin? And it's soft. It's like feathers passing you by. And you can't help yourself, but you're drawn along with it. You're swaying. Your body is actually swaying. Swaying in conjunction with this energy and this feeling. Maybe you are a little piece of seaweed in a pool or a, or a a lake or an ocean. And this current comes up behind you and sways you with it. And you feel the motion rocking you all through your body. We like to be rocked, don't we? You know why babies like to be rocked? They're in flow. They're in motion. Everyone likes that sensation. It puts us to sleep. It puts us in alignment. It puts us at ease. It gets us closer to source. So rock yourself. How about a tunnel that draws you? Some people love the tunnel. Some people hate it because they think, oh, my God, it's the tunnel of light. Am I dying? Other people go, no, (laughs) this is a tunnel of beauty. It's a tunnel of energy. It's God's grace. And when I'm flowing along this beautiful tunnel of, of light and color, I'm right where things are happening. It's like being in a tube, a lava tube, a tunnel of light. Try that. How about a slide or a a luge track? How about ice skating, gliding forward endlessly, effortlessly into a distance, a horizon you can't see, but you're being pushed along, nudged along? I don't particularly like skiing as an image to use. Here's why. Because you start at the top and you go down. I don't want to have anybody have that sensation. Maybe you could go cross country if you could make it feel effortless. (laughs) How about flying like a bird on the wind? It's one of my personal favorites. When I look up and I see the birds and they're not even flapping a wing and I think how heavy they must be, yet how powerful the wind and the air must be that it holds them aloft and that bird doesn't worry about it, it takes it for granted, knows it to be true. Gosh, maybe I can be the same way. Just spreading my wings without a twitch without any effort at all and being taken where I want to go. I also use a path. How about a path? Walking along a path. I love paths because I use paths a lot when I'm guiding people especially because I say, here's the path you're on. This is the arrow. This is the trajectory you started out on. Do you like it? Do you want to change it? Look, do you see suddenly five more paths are in front of you? Pick one. Pick anyone. Pick one that feels good. What does it look like? What does it feel like? Feel the sensation. You're walking along it. You're not stopping. You can't stop. Stopping is like treading water. You're still in motion. You're just staying in the same place while you move. Okay? Paths are wonderful. You can also feel yourself gliding or flying along an invisible string of light. I like this one, too, maybe because, you know, years, years, years ago when I was interested in uh, out-of-body experiences, they talked a lot about astral cords and things like that and always being connected to your body. Some people resonate with that. Or you could sort of modernize it and talk instead about these strings of light that are you 
And there is one that particularly glows so bright, it's like an umbilical cord into your greater self, into God, into source, into your future. And you're right there. You are aligned with it. You are glowing alongside it. You are running your fingertips along this smooth, beautiful, bright purity in motion. And it's you. And you're part of it. Now, for those of you who say, oh, this motion stuff is already making me seasick. (laughs) And you have questions. How fast do I go? How slow do I go? I say, it doesn't really matter. doesn't matter. Yes, sometimes your flow will give you information. If you are gliding along at a beautiful, perfect pace, it probably means your life is also doing the same. If you're barely moving, it probably means you're doing the same. You're, you're more like treading water in your flow. You're, being, you're holding yourself back. You're afraid to make decisions. Uh, you've reached a place where you've denied so much for so long, or you've crushed your emotions, or you have so much mistrust and doubt in yourself. Your flow is kind of saying, she doesn't know what she wants, so we're just kind of giving her more of same. You know, just at this very droopy pace. You can always make your flow be at the pace you want it to be. Just make it happen in your mind. Yes, it might originally or initially tell you something. But if you don't like it, just change it. It's kind of like in a dream, you know, you wake up and you go, damn, I didn't like that. So you fall back asleep and you kind of fix things. Same thing in your flow. Just fix things right there. What if you really don't want to feel yourself in motion? Here's something else I do with great success. I go to my ocean. I call call it Sugar Sand Beach because where I go there, I feel the sand itself is energy and I can shape it and mold it into anything. I put my fingers in it and as soon as I draw them up, it just springs into whatever I'm looking for or asking for or the emotion that I'm wanting. This sand is magic. Sometimes I'll scoop up the energy of the ocean that's lapping at my toes. And it's the same way. It'll just spring right into being whatever I want it to be. Now, the sense of ocean and sand, notice the ocean is what has the current, natural cycles. So so I'm still acknowledging moving. I'm just saying I'm pausing for a moment while I do something here because I don't want to have to carry the sense of movement while I'm actually creating or feeling because that's too much effort for me right now. So I'm just going to chill out on the sand, let the ocean be my acknowledgement of flow. And I'm going to just concentrate on feeling, feeling, feeling. Sometimes if I feel a little extra need to get aligned, I'll imagine that someone has drawn a line in the sand with a stick along the ocean's edge. And I just begin leisurely walking it, following it, loving it, enjoying it. These all work for me. I've tried them all. I've done them all. So I hope sharing this with you, I've tried to be really information-packed and instructive, um, helps you. And just so you know, this is how I always teach. I teach as much as I can. Sometimes I overteach. I know. Sometimes I give you more content than you need. But if you're truly trying to learn something, you want to dunk into it. Your next step now is to start practicing. Practice. Go get some MP3s. Make a little investment in yourself. Sign up for the Flow Dream of the Month Club or my Sapphire group. Uh, Get on the wait list for when the Diamond Group opens up again. Get into your flow. Really learn how to use this. It is the single most effective tool that I use in my life for creating everything and anything. I no longer look at my life as what kind of marriage do I want to make? What kind of business do I want to make? I don't look at things as singular and separate. I look at everything through the viewpoint of flow and say, how does it work within flow? How does it fit together with what everything else is going on? All these other things that I've put together in this place. It's the most comprehensive way of starting, creating, developing everything. No longer do you put a life together piecemeal, one little piece at a time, you know, get a boyfriend, this or that. No, the whole thing comes together at once. It is amazing. Spectacular. All right, I'd love you all to go um, help me out right now. I'm asking for a favor from you, and you could say in return for all the learning, perhaps. I've recently updated my app, and that means that on iTunes, people have to try and find it again and review it again because the reviews don't come up. So if you're listening on the app or if you haven't got it yet, it's totally free, by the way, I would be so grateful to you if you would take a few moments to go to the Flow Dreaming app, just type in the word Flow Dreaming or type in Flow Dreaming Meditation or Flow Dreaming Manifesting. 
any of those keywords, it'd be great. Flow dreaming meditation, flow dreaming manifesting, or flow dreaming. And this is um, in I- iPads, uh, iPhones, Android, at the Google Store, the Amazon Store. You can find it everywhere. And if you care to leave a review, I will send you major flow and good kisses and, and good luck and love. <laughs> my energy to your energy um, in my gratitude for doing that. Really, really appreciate it. Um, the other thing you could do is, um, this is more just to share with the rest of the community. Uh, go to my Facebook page. Look up Flow Dreaming. And I'm going to be posting shortly, if I haven't already, a little note saying, how do you experience flow? What visuals or what motion do you use? Because I'm curious. I named a ton, but I'm always learning from you. And I would love to learn some more, maybe ones that I didn't mention, or maybe ones I did mention, and we'll just have more validation for other people to know they work very well. The two things, two requests for you all. We're going to go to a brief break. When we get back, yes, 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 I see your calls, and I'm definitely going to get to you. Um, I'm sacrificing doing the flow dream with you this uh uh, this podcast because I feel like a lot of the imagery was very instructive and I actually gave you exercises. So in a way you were kind of flowing. <laughs> I snuck in a flow. <laughs> you just didn't know what it was. All right. We're going to a break. We'll be back in just a few moments right after this. busy to flow dream or do you just sometimes forget it's easy to get so caught up in living that we forget the bigger deeper more important things such as being aware of our flow that's why summer introduced the flow dream of the month program start and stop whenever you want and enjoy the first 30 days and a flow dream free each month summer sends you a new flow dream to work with as she moves through carefully chosen areas of our lives Be surprised, be challenged, be delighted, and be reminded. Your flow is the deepest you. Commit to it. Check out the Flow Dream of the Month Club at flowdreaming.com today. Did you know you can like Flow Dreaming on Facebook? Just search for Flow Dreaming on Facebook and click like to start getting summer's Flow Dreaming updates. Ditto for Twitter. Manifest your life with Summer McStravick and Flow Dreaming. Welcome back to Flow Dreaming. My apologies if you heard me during the ad. I hear that some of you did. Yes, sometimes I'm chit-chatting with my um, my producer and the lovely station manager, Cameron. We're talking about stuff like mics and boards and callers and so on, which reminds me, I am going to my callers right now. Tamaya, you have been waiting so patiently. What can I help you with today? Tamaya, I can't hear oh, you. Oh, hello. Hi. 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 What can I do oh, for you? Uh, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> I'm so excited. Thank you for taking Ooh, my call. Don't be, don't be nervous. Um, I am calling uh, because I, I have been listening to you since Hay House for a long time now, but uh, just recently I started downloading your podcast and just started your flow dreaming process, um, specifically on financial and um manifesting more income and uh, getting out of debt and stuff. Yeah. And also, and which I have been really, really um, enjoying, and I do this like first thing in the morning to get my day started on positive flow, and I have really enjoyed it. Yeah. And, um, and just last night, I was talking with my husband about doing some tapping around our money concerns and uh in addition to getting out of debt and uh, getting money flowing more into our Tomorrow, lives. I don't mean to interrupt you, <laughs> but okay. I've only got a couple I'm minutes. I'm it. not going to be able to okay. answer you. What's up? Okay. What, okay. what, what question so do you have today, around that? Uh, so today, my hu- it's more like for my husband, um, he didn't get the promotion he was really hoping for. He didn't get the raise that he was hoping for and all of that. And I just wanted to know, like, what does this all mean, like, when we are trying or when we have just started, like, this 
um, the slow stuff and the tapping and all that, and everything just seemed to crumble down in like okay. the next let me, day. <laughs> let me let me answer this because I actually received another email from someone uh, recently about this. Um, she okay. also had started working with her finances, and she said everything just went to you know hell. <laughs> she says, "Is that normal? <laughs> I'm afraid to try again." Um, uh-huh. It is not. It is it, that is not typical. Uh, first of all, because um, if you are flow dreaming correctly, what you're asking for, yes, is that things shift for you and move for you. But you can mm-hmm. ask that it happen as painlessly as possible, the best way possible. You can ask that a, re- a new resource comes in even before an old resource leaves. That is all open to you to feel and create. I think instead what mm-hmm. happens is sometimes people are very impatient and they they just say, you know, I want this, I want that, and then they don't get it. And I think it really has to do with miscommunicating your desire to flow because flow is mm-hmm. always reflecting what you're giving it, no matter what, all the time. So if you were asking for your husband to get this particular job, it's very possible that this really wasn't the job for him, no matter how bright and shiny and perfect it may have seemed. I've seen this happen before. Um, mm-hmm. So I would have approached it a little differently. I would say my husband is walking into an amazing opportunity where he is extremely well paid or well compensated. We are just, you know, are over the moon about this. I'm feeling this happen all around us. Yes, I'm feeling things shift and grow and develop, but they're doing so at a pace that I absolutely can handle. I love it. I love everything about what's happening to me right now financially. Okay, so what I've just done is I've opened the doors to flow to give you what you want without your specifics on it, because your specifics might be wrong. That might be part Mm -hmm. of it. Okay, Okay, Tamaya, I got to let you go. And uh, thank you so so much. You're so welcome. And, you know, hers is a question I would have loved to have stayed longer with, actually, but um, I can't. I do want to just give you a heads up. It's kind of a secret still, but. Next month, I am going to be creating an incredible series called Money Intuition, and it's all about manifesting finances in flow. I'm going to be part of it. My mom, Venus Andrecht, is going to be part of it. I know you guys have been saying, when are you going to do something with your mom? By the way, her show, Dear Venus, comes on right after this. Um, she's going to be part of it, and I have some other amazing women um, who are going to be sharing with you. Uh, as well. So that is something you'll probably want to hop on. Please be on my email list. That is how you're going to be notified about it. If you're not on the list, chances are good. You're not going to find it or see it out there because you have to get registered. Um, gosh, it looks like I ran out of time. Frida, I was really hoping to get to you, but there's no way I know I can answer you in two minutes. I really appreciate your calling. Um, Angela, anybody else I didn't reach, please try again next show or you can Ask my mom, Venus Andrecht, uh, for her um, uh, information and to help you out. She's a wonderful intuitive. By the way, you can also find her show uh, on iTunes. And my love goes to you guys who've already gone to the iTunes store as well as to the app store. They are two different places. And any review is a good review. And any download is a good download. So um, I would I would love it uh, to see. And, and thank you already in advance for those of you who've been doing that and posting on Facebook, too. This is going to wrap me up. I am looking forward to being back here again with you next week for another whole hour of Flow Dreaming. More good topics, different topic every single week for you to teach and learn. So until then, everyone, please stay in your flow. And my love goes to you all.